What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Ari. Welcome back to AM Advice. Hope you guys are doing okay. I meant to say Ari. That's my name. For anybody want to know, my name is Ari. Sorry. Uh, hope you guys are doing awesome. I'm doing good, right? Today we're here with another reaction video. Today I have a little um, twisted reaction video, right? Um, inside the mind of Jeffrey Danmore. Danmore? Danmore. Jeffrey Danmore. That's what I meant to say. The serial killer. Chillin' <laughs> jailhouse. What? Chillin' jailhouse. I have no idea what that is. But anyway, I don't know if y'all hear the serial killer Jeffrey Dano. Da da Mar, Jeffrey Dahmer. Right? You know? It was a bunch of serial killing murder. I think he's a, No, that's Lacey Peterson. Um It's it's an old story before I was even born. Yeah. Right? So with that, I don't know too much in it. Let me, let me just say that. I don't know too much about it, as you can see. But I know, I heard the name before, but now I'm, we're going to learn together exactly who he is and what he did. Obviously, he's a serial killer, right? Um, and yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, smash the like button, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff down below. Anything you want me to react to, just drop it in the comment section. I'll get onto it. But you know what's the crazy part about this? What is, what is it with these Jeffrey? Jeffrey Donamar, Donamar, Jeffrey Donamar, serial killer. Jeffrey Epstein, a little freak, a little, a little pedophile freak, and Jeffrey Star, a little racist. Hmm. <laughs> and if anybody is a supporter of Jeffrey watching this, I say what I mean. I mean, I say your boys are freaking racist. Go cool what he say. That's all I just say. He call him. You know, I haven't come out on the band. Anyway, let's get into the video myself to it. I, 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 uh... He looked like a killer. <laughs> I don't know. I went to great lengths. He is pure evil, but you'd never know it by looking at him. But when you hear what? him, that's another story. His killing field was Milwaukee, and he got away with murder for more than a decade. But how Whoa. did any of this happen? For the first time ever, Nancy Glass is here, inside the world of Jeffrey Dunn. Bill, when I sat down opposite Jeffrey Dahmer for this interview, I wondered what he would tell me, how hard it would be to get him to discuss his horrific crimes. What I found was that he was very forthcoming. He volunteered details that may be difficult to hear. I began by asking what he wanted from the men he picked up. I had uh, these obsessive uh, desires and, and uh, thoughts wanting to control them, to... Uh I don't know how to put it, uh, possess them permanently. And that's why you killed them. Right. Right. With them, not because I hated them, but because I wanted to keep them with me. And, uh, as my obsession grew, uh, I was saving body parts such as uh, skulls and uh, skeletons. Jeffrey Dahmer is recalling his monstrous past. Almost two years ago, in this little apartment in Milwaukee, police discovered the grisly remnants of one of the most horrible crime sprees in American history. Jeffrey Dahmer, an unassuming chocolate factory worker, would eventually confess that he had seduced, murdered, and dismembered 17 young men. He even ate some of his victims' body parts. He instantly became the center of worldwide media attention, a serial killer unmasked. There were protests and press conferences in Milwaukee as people tried to understand how this could have happened in their midst. How did Jeffrey Dahmer get away with murder after murder for 13 years? How did a boy born into a hard-working, middle-class family turn into the worst kind of monster imaginable? In this exclusive interview, we put those questions to Jeffrey Dahmer himself. We met with him at the maximum security prison where he is serving his sentence of 999 years. For the first time... <laughs> I'm in the law. Oh, Lord. 999 <laughs> yes. Oh my God! So this nigga die and come back into a different lifetime. He's still gonna go back to jail. Oh my gosh! I'm not laughing at the situation. No, that's weird. I'm laughing at how many years he got. Nine hundred and ninety-nine years. Oh God. He 
talks about his crimes and gives us a chilling look inside the mind of a serial killer. It's a process that doesn't happen overnight uh, when you uh, depersonalize another person and view them as just an object, uh, an object for pleasure instead of a, a living, breathing human being. Uh, it, it seems to make it easier to uh, do things you shouldn't do. The reason why Jeffrey Dahmer was able to get away with his crimes was because of just what you are seeing here. Jeffrey Dahmer is intelligent and articulate. That is what makes him so frightening. But if you listen carefully to his words throughout this interview, you realize it is a thin disguise. You do sound, though, like the kind of person who could have said to himself, this is wrong, I must stop. I always knew that, that it was wrong, but uh, uh, after the, the first, the first uh, killing was not planned, I was uh, coming back from the shopping mall back in 78. I had uh, fantasies about picking up a, a hitchhiker and uh, taking him back to the house and uh, having complete control and dominance over him. The hitchhiker's name was Stephen Hicks. He was just 18. Jeffrey Dahmer took him to his parents' house. There he strangled him with a barbell. He dismembered the body and hid it in a drain pipe. It was Jeffrey Dahmer who gave those details to the police in his confession. No one, no one had a clue as to what was happening for, for over a decade. During that time, Jeffrey Dahmer joined the army and was sent to Germany. He was eventually discharged for a drinking problem and returned to Ohio. Nine years after Stephen Hicks' murder, the killing began again. What happened to you in the nine years in between that you were able to stop, that you were able to control yourself? It just wasn't an opportunity to uh, fully express what I wanted to, to do. There was just not the, the physical opportunity to do it then. And uh, I started, when I moved to Milwaukee in 81, uh, I started reading pornography, going to the bookstores. You know how my dad used to read porn and how to watch it? <laughs> um, eventually that led to uh, frequenting the gay bars. And then I... One time I brought this uh, young man back to the hotel room, the Ambassador Hotel. I uh, was just planning on drugging him and uh, spending the night with him. Really? I had no intention of hurting him. When I woke up in the morning, he uh, had a broken rib here. I was heavily bruised. Apparently I had uh, beaten him to death with my fists. And you have no memory? I had no memory of it. But that's what started the whole spree all over again. Dahmer says he snuck the corpse of his victim, Stephen Toomey, out of his hotel room in a suitcase. Then he took it to his grandmother's house, where he cut up the body and put it in plastic garbage bags. When you killed this man, afterwards, were you repulsed? Were you upset? No, it, at the time, uh, it, was a, it was almost addictive. It was almost... Uh, uh, a surge of energy. Uh, I wouldn't have to uh, uh, worry about um, any of their needs or anything. I just had complete control of the situation. But Jeffrey Dahmer was out of control. The urge to kill had overpowered him. As police later learned, he wasn't satisfied with his victim's death. He wanted more. Why did you photograph them? It was my way of remembering uh, their appearance, their physical beauty. Uh, I also wanted to keep something. If I couldn't keep them there with me whole, I, at least I felt that I could keep uh, their skeletons. And uh, I even went so far as planning on uh, setting up an altar with uh, the uh, Ten different uh, skulls and skeletons. And what was the purpose of the altar going to be? Uh, as a sort of uh, memorial, uh, a, a point where I could, 
I don't know. It's it's, it's so bizarre and strange. It's hard to describe a place where I can really? my thoughts um, and feed my obsession. When the bodies were still in your apartment, there was no time when you would see them and say, "This is grotesque. What have I done?" There were times. There were times, but the compulsive obsession with uh, doing what I was doing overpowered any feelings of revulsion. This man, with a quiet, almost shy demeanor, became a master manipulator who was able to lure strangers he met at gay bars to his apartment. He was even able to con the police into returning a 14-year-old boy to him after neighbors called 911 upset that the child was in the street naked and bleeding. Dahmer convinced the police that he and the boy were simply having a lover's quarrel. It's a intoxicated uh, boyfriend of another boyfriend. How old was the child? It wasn't a child, was it? No. After the police left, Jeffrey Dahmer murdered that boy. Conorak sent the some phone. This man says he had a near fatal encounter with Jeffrey Dahmer. I want to take some picture of my back. He hit me with a rubber hammer on my neck. He was lucky to escape because by then the killing had become almost routine. Before you went out to pick up a man, was there any kind of ritual you went through? I go to the nightclubs, uh, drink, watch the uh, the strip tea shows, and uh, if I didn't meet anyone at the bars, Strippers. I'd uh, go to the bath clubs. You know what? He don't even deserve the right to say strippers. He, he shouldn't even utter the word strippers. Call them strip tees. Strippers is for decent people. And uh, meet meet someone there, offer them money. And we go back to the apartment, um, have a few drinks. I have the, uh, the uh, sleeping pill mixture already prepared. Person would drink it, fall asleep, and uh, that's when they would be strangled. <laughs> Watching the movie Exorcist 3 was also part of his ritual. It put him in the mood for murder. I felt so hopelessly uh, evil and perverted that, uh, that I, I actually derived a sort of pleasure from watching that tape. Did you like feeling evil? No. No, I didn't. But uh, I tried to overcome the thoughts and it worked for a while but eventually I gave in. While Jeffrey Dahmer may say things today that make it seem like he understands what went on in his mind, he does not. All he can do is tell you what happened but he cannot stop whatever it is that drove him to kill in the first place. Do you still feel those same urges? Do you still feel that compulsion, that obsession? Uh, I wish I could say that uh, it just left completely, but uh, no, there are times when I still do, still do have uh, the old compulsions. Jeffrey Dahmer says as time went on, his mind became more and more warped, and yet he was clever enough to continue to elude police and lure young men to his apartment. We should warn you, the details are very graphic. I started having these obsessive thoughts when I was about uh, 15 and 16, and they got worse and worse. What were your fantasies about? Uh, they were sexual fantasies of control, power, uh, complete dominance. Uh, they became reality. Was there pleasure in that fantasy? There was excitement. Bro, if you gay... How is being gay... Let's watch it. Excitement, uh, fear, pleasure, all mixed together. Jeffrey Dahmer fulfilled his fantasies by murdering and dismembering 17 young men. In time, his desires became more extreme, his deeds more grotesque. Listen to him talk about the most unnatural things in the most matter-of-fact of ways. That's He's when so he realized that none of it has touched him. I was, uh... Branching out, that's when the cannibalism started. Eating of the heart and uh, the heart muscle. 
it was a way of uh, making me feel that uh, they were a part of me. At, at, for, at first it was just curiosity, and then it became compulsive. Then I tried to uh, keep the person alive by inducing a zombie-like state. Um, by uh, injecting uh, first uh, dilute acid solution into their brain or uh, hot water. And uh, it never did completely work. Could someone like you be stopped? Could you be helped? No, I, I was I was dead set on, on going with this compulsion. It was the only thing that gave me any uh, any satisfaction. He became so warped by his evil impulses that he even took a victim's head with him to work at the Ambrosia Chocolate Factory. I kept the, uh, the mummified uh, head and skull of one of the victims in uh, a, a carrot case in my locker at work. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. Jeffrey Dahmer exhibited some disturbing behavior early on. He began drinking heavily as a teenager, dropped out of college, was arrested for indecent <coughs> exposure, disorderly conduct, and fondling a 13-year-old boy. Tragically, one of his murder victims would be that boy's brother. Do you know what started it? Is there any kind of incident that you can remember? To this day, I don't know what started it. And uh, the person to blame is sitting right across from you. That's the only person. Not uh, parents, not society, not pornography. I mean, those are just excuses. His macabre 13-year crime spree finally ended when this man, Tracy Edwards, brought the police to the infamous apartment. Like the others, he had gone there with the promise of money. He was listening to my heart, because at a point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. I hit him, I, and I ran. What was the turning point for you that made you suddenly realize that you had done something terribly wrong, something you should be sorry for? It was uh, the night of the arrest. I have no memory of what happened uh, during the six hours before uh, the last victim ran out of the apartment. I heard a knock on the door, and the police were there. They knocked? Uh, with, with the last victim. Why did you do like I did to Brianna Taylor? Kick the damn door in. Uh, they asked me where the key was to the handcuffs. I was, my mind was in a haze. I sort of pointed to the bedroom, and that's where they uh, found the pictures. And then they, they yelled, cuff him. And I was uh, handcuffed. And uh, it, it was just the realization that there was no point in trying to hide, hide, uh, my actions anymore. The, the best route was to help help the police identify all the victims and just uh, make a complete confession. When it was revealed that most of the victims were black or homosexual, people in Milwaukee were incensed. Many felt that was why he went after them and why the police didn't seem to care when their families reported them missing. Ten of your 17 victims were black. Were they racially motivated? It, it was not racially motivated. It was not uh, sexual preference. It was just to find an obsession with uh, the best-looking young man I could find. While you just heard him say that his sexual preference had nothing to do with the killings, no. he has not come to terms with his homosexuality. Never understood it. There was no use trying to fight it because I, I couldn't rid myself of it. It was, it was too powerful and persistent. Do you dislike it? Yes, it's caused uh, a lot of problems. Nigga, you caused a lot of problems. Hold on, let me fill this. Homosexuality has not homosexual. 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 Oh, you're not gonna see. How come causing my problems? You have. Nigga, you carry the head on in your book bag to work. Not book bag, but your 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 ba your bag to work. A severed head. You weird. Gosh. 
If you gay, you gay, bro. Accept it. This, this is a part of the I don't understand. You say you want dominance over them, right? Obviously, you sweet talk them, right? And they come to your apartment in order to drug them. That's what you say. Bro, you done got them. You could clap them cheeks, bro. Go, 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 go knock his head off. But I don't mean literally knock his head off now. Come on. It's so sad and scary that there are people like him still to this day out in this world. I wonder if he, I would, I really wonder if he's alive. Courtney, of I'm gonna start searching uh, Unanswered questions. The conflicts remain with him and so do his compulsions, but in prison he finally cannot act on his savage desires. If you were out on the street now, would you still be committing the crimes? Probably. If this hadn't happened, there's no doubt I probably would be. I can't think of anything that would have stopped me. I think y'all watching what I watching. I try to Google how he died. Okay, he died. Okay, he's dead. At the age of 34. Okay, Jeffrey Dahmer. A rare jailhouse interview. Hey, cut it up. Jeffrey Dahmer on November 22nd, 1994. He died at age 34. How did he die? I really want to know how he died. Ah! <laughs> I need to laugh. Oh my gosh. On November 28, 1994, Donna was beaten to death by Christopher Scarver, a fellow inmate at the Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin. Okay, so he got beat to death. My thing is, right? How did this nigga not get the electrical chair? Of course, it's not the electrical chair now. They inject something to you. But how? Because maybe he came forward. Uh, how did this dude not get the electrical chill? Damn. People be safe out here, man. Don't with little weirdos like this dude here. Please, people, be careful. Please. I don't want none of my supporters. I don't want nothing happen to nobody, especially the ones I care for. Just be aware of your surroundings. Stay away from niggas like him. Dudes like him. Stay away. And he don't, that's the problem, right? He in jail sitting on, and he don't even kill. Hey, it's judgment day, for, well, not judgment day. Well, it's his time, God has decided what to do with him. As you can see, he already died. That's just crazy. But nevertheless, let me just stop complaining. What is, what's up with these Jeffreys, bro? Jeffrey Epstein, him and Jeffrey Epstein should be freaking cousins. Only thing Jeffrey that do is raping little, little girls. And he like pooping boys. The boy, he, he poop a little boy too. But nevertheless, hope you guys enjoy the entertainment or at least learn what I learned. And you guys smash the like button, subscribe, comment on that good stuff down below in the comment section. If anything you want me to react to, just let me know as well. My name is Orin and you've been watching AM on Advice. Remember, the world is yours. Peace.